Hey, what's up guys? We are at Daytona International Speedway in Daytona Beach, Florida. And we're gonna go see if we can get a tour and check this place out. So I ask everybody, please make sure your hands are in place and feet are inside so that we don't ruin anybody's safety records. But as we come up the infield of the Daytona International Speedway, a lot of different components in there, ladies and gentlemen. I'll talk about each of them probably in greater depth during the tour, but just to give you a thumbnail. The race fans, our bleachers in those days held about 31,000 and they guess estimated the crowd in the infield to be about 8,000 race fans. There are people over there in every one of those seats watching us as we go on tour. The speedway and backstretch are not identical. Our backstretch here is 3,000 foot long. Our front stretch is 3,800. And I'll talk about that whole concept when we get up over on the front stretch. But before we go out on the track, I want to give you a cross-section of that famous safer barrier that was added here to the speedway. You can look on either side of the tram, but you can get a cross-section of the safer barrier. You can see the welded steel tubing that lines the track surface. Those are welded together in sections, both vertically and horizontally. Then those individual sections are tied to the racing, the original racing well, which is concrete, uh, by a series of straps. The major component of that safer system are those triangular shaped pieces of foam. That's what gives the wall uh, the ability to flex when hit by a race car at speed. Now, here's the first thing that TV it looks like where the cars are doing 190 mile an hour down here that the track is flat. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you can feel in the seat of your pants that this track is not flat. Bill France, when he created the Speedway, put an automatic three degrees of banking from that outside wall down to our left, uh, down to the double yellow line. That was for track drying, because in 1959, there was no such thing as a jet dryer or the airtight. But when the physics get it back, the fifth car, it just normally leads to a crash. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you look to the right-hand side of the tram, you are now looking at the full 31 degrees of banking. When we stop up at the start and finish line, we'll be stopping in an area that's about 18 degrees because it gets really pretty unsafe to try to walk up and down. Also point out something uh, here. You can see they've lined the exterior with the safer barrier. They did it on the inside also to protect cars if they come down off the racetrack and go through. But I would like to bring in one of the newer features of the speedway and that are those gray boxes. Bill France Jr., who is our second president, mile long and over 100,000 individual race fans. Now, as we work our way along the high banks here, uh, well, when they broadcast the first races, they put a camera person with a set of goggles and a camera in that open box. That's how they gave you some of what they originally called speed shots. Today, with the advent of remote control cameras, the person doesn't have to go in the box with just a camera. What they do is report the weather, because, ladies and gentlemen, this speedway is over a mile in length from the turns down in turn one and two up to here to turns three and four. Many times have I been out here when it's been raining down in turn one and two and the sun shining down behind us there in three or four. If you look to the left, you can see the east end of our garage and pit area. You can see one of the two Sunoco fueling stations and that low building with the yellow band on top is where Victor Tire and Rubber sets up their tire shop for the race team. Ladies and gentlemen, is 18 degrees of banking. So if anybody's got any stability issues or has trouble walking, I would suggest stay as close to the double yellow lines as you can. But everybody else, please feel free to walk up, take some pictures. I'll show you a couple of real good cameras. This gentleman has the right idea. He's been in the Alps in Europe. He's going up on a zigzag. You notice even in Europe when they go this way, they go up and back and they do the switchbacks. Linearly, the physics are not in your favor. Now, 
Now, one of the other things I always encourage people to do is reach down and touch the black top. Feel it hotter? No. Uh, I want you to feel the abrasiveness. This track was built in 1959. It has only been repaved, other than the original paving, twice. They're talking about maybe 2030 or the early part of the 30s to come around and repave it. Uh, but yet, it's really phenomenal. If you've walked across the Walmart or the Albertsons or even just city streets, you feel the little waves from where traffic drives. You see all of that. Ladies and gentlemen, this is taking race cars. And... <laughs> but yeah. Hold on, please. And now imagine you're doing this. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and now you can feel the transition from the 18 degrees down to the 3 on the edge. Here now, that's great. If you're know, running the road course, and that's the end of uh, you can see to our right the speedway safety equipment. We do not get that from the taxpayers down here in Florida. Just all of that safety equipment that you see parked in there is owned by the speedway, in addition to, I believe, it's eight big full size fire trucks. Uh, we staff it with uh, four tires, two cans of racing fuel, and adjustments. And with the old mud dump pattern, you took it 12 and a half to 14 seconds. Uh, we've seen some pit stops already with a single lug uh, down below 10 seconds. That's, and this is actually a transition uh, that brings the race cars from the garage area, which we're headed to, out here to the racing surface. This is called the Rolex shoot. Uh, over our head, and I know the angle's terrible, so I apologize, I have to catch it on the back are two actual Rolex clocks that are used to uh, do the timing for the Rolex 24-hour race. So we're not able to stop in there. But you can see how truly small Victory Lane is. You can imagine putting a race car in there and 25 or 30 teammates and family men. And call them just by colors. We've got the blue garages down here, which is our largest group. We have the red and the yellow garages over to our left. Uh, also, probably the biggest renovation that the Speedway went under uh, was after, 24, uh, after 2004 hurricanes. Bill Prince created this area that he refers to as a fan zone. Uh, you can see a stage to our left. They use it for driver introductions, Q&A sessions, things like that. It's the entertainment hub here in the infield. Uh, during the 500, there were no less than six different concerts up there. If you look to your right, you can see what the typical garage looks like. That's actually the inspection bay. Uh, there's nothing really special, and that's why I don't. Uh, the hub for most of the food here in the infield. Uh, during the 500, there were no less than 15 different individual food trucks in here, and another 10 or 12 as we get out here to the souvenir area. So a lot of activity takes here, and it's really a pretty big bargain. Uh, last year, the fans could get in here for two-day admission for 99 bucks total.
Oval. You can see from down in turn four down to turn one how much they had to blow out this side of the track to get to his two and a half miles. And if you look at the Google Earth, and I like Google Earth, the thing is the farther away from that start and finish line you are, the less expensive it is. The tour guides, all 10 of us, tried to get together and decide, quote, what the best seat is in the house. We couldn't come to a conclusion. Because my wife and I personally, we're down there just about where you see the buzzards flying around. We're down with the section 384 because we like to see the stuff going into turn one when they just got the green flag and are all raring to go. You also see all the pit action and things like that. But I can tell you there's other guys and wives that love to sit down on that end and watch the final lap unfold and everything. And of course, everybody starts the finish line. So it really is just what a person wants to do. But Daytona this year was a sellout. They, that truly was probably stretching just a little because they did have some ones and twosies. But as far as this main 100,000, it was gone. Austin Sendrick, whose grandfather won the run. Indy 500 as a car owner. Sendrick is going to bring them to the line way up high to block Ryan Blaney. And at the line, Sendrick beats Bubba Wallace by half a car length, and they crash going into turn one. It's Hall of Fame of America. We've done induction since 1989. We're the only Hall of Fame that covers all motorsports, so you can see more than just cars here. I've got boats, planes, and... For team owner Roger Penske, five Daytona wins with five different drivers. And Ford goes to victory lane for the second year in a row. I hope you don't need this motor. <laughs> <laughs> from Finland, 
one lap to go in the 1982 World Championship. Sigalis, what can we say more about him? He's done a, had a good world final, just shakes his fist to his fans, no trouble at all, just cruising now, and it's third place on the roster, misses, and the American whirly across the line. Dennis Sigalis coming across first in this event, puts him third overall to Les Collins in second, and Bruce Penhall is the world champion. I have good tread on these shoes, actually. I can't even stand in place, guys. My feet are sliding already. <laughs> All right, guys, that tour was awesome. It was only 25 bucks, totally worth it. I feel like the fitting end to this video is here at the Dale Earnhardt statue, who had the most all-time wins at Daytona with 34 wins. 20 years of trying, 20 years of frustration. Dale Earnhardt will come to the caution flag to win the Daytona 500, finally. And uh, if you're in this area, this is totally a worthwhile stop. And make sure you actually come on a day where there's nothing going on. There are so many different events here as we learn through the tour. But again, thank you for joining me. If you like this video, please give it a like. Uh, if you have a comment, please leave it below. And if you want to subscribe to my channel, please do that. I've got more videos coming up in the near future. Thanks. See you.